So can I give it up for Harmeet and Angel? And together we wrote a collaborative piece called A Break from Society Shackle. And a little background, um, both Angel and I took Counseling 12 with each other, and that's where we met. And accidentally we took sociology, and we learned a lot about gender roles and how we actually don't follow a lot of the gender roles that society tells us to um, do. And want to add? First of all, thank you for being here, and thank you, Donna, for having us. Yeah, like Harmeet's saying, so we both believe in social equity, and now we're going into like sexual equity as well, because there's a lot of differences out there. So we hope you enjoy our piece. We wrote it from the bottom of our heart, and we're really just trying to get people to, you know, let's start thinking outside the box, and let's not be restrained to the shackles. So, so we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. We are people, constructed from two people sexually engineered to be each other's counterpart. A counterpart based on sexual anatomy, not integrity. We are born into this world without knowledge of the world we are born into. We are unaware of any gender roles, gender norms, or any gender constructs that are expected of us. Yet we are bound to a society that binds us to these roles. That binds us to a set of gender roles that we have no say in. Males don't show emotion, and they definitely don't cry, for it is a sign of weakness. Females have to show emotions. They have to be nurturing. Not doing so results in being seen as cold and bitter. Males have to be advocates of promiscuity. Females have to be seen as innocent, yet sexy. Males are intelligent and superior to all. Females are inferior and restricted to what males want. Society wants to conform our personalities in a dictatorial manner. So they can expect our actions and in turn control them. These actions aren't meant for creativity and thought. They are meant for superiority to one's sex. Thoughts and creativity have no sex, yet they are restricted in regards to our roles. We all have an identity that we hide from people. But only because we feel that we can't be accepted from this society. <clears throat> A society filled with unattainable expectations. If we don't live within our social norms, we can never be accepted. Throughout history, the people who have surpassed their roles are the ones who have changed them. They became the change in society by breaking these roles and being the unique individuals they were born to be. The social divergence between males and females is absolute vilification, condemnation, and disrespect. We are made from two opposing sexual engineers that make us one and equal. Without both engineers, there is no procreation. We are people, if we are cut, we bleed. The cuts, scars, bruises are all felt in the same way. Pain, pain is something that we can all relate to. And the psychological pain that we receive in result of gender norms is greater than any physical pain. We, we should be seen as, as individuals who have unique identities. identities not as a stereotype pertaining to our sex. We are all different and live in coexistence with our sexual counterparts. Our encounters and experiences with one another should be based on mutual respect and understanding, not on the narrow-mindedness of gender stereotypes that try to hinder us as a whole. We are meant for just than just the roles we acquire from our sexual anatomy. Broken gender norms should be celebrated, not punished. We were meant to live together in sync, not hostility. Let us live and let live. We are all beautiful, intelligent, creative, and emotional. Please don't conform to the restrictions and restraints that are held upon us by society's shackle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, this one is called Optimism for the Future, and I wrote this about a year ago. Um, I, it was about a year 
when I started school, I was getting into the college phase, like how we're supposed to do things, you know, here at Mission College. And there was this prompt where we had to talk about revealing ourselves. We all have these masks that we hide behind, and we don't want to reveal the vulnerabilities that we have under that huge mask that we do. Um, so this is based off of that. So this is optimism for the future. Uh, okay. To many, it may seem like I'm someone who will go far. Someone who's going to change the world. Someone who goes to school and is the overachiever in and out of class. Someone who takes classes not just for a degree, but also to challenge herself. It seems like that's who I am on the outside. But on the inside, I'm scared of the future. Although that's the only thing that keeps me going, that's the reason why I'm still alive. But I'm terrified. The future? I find myself thinking, I can't do much. And will I even amount to anything? Or will I end up in my mother's shoes, a mistreated mother of three with a husband who is not in his right mind, no family to stand, stand by her? Alone. All alone. Slowly dying in misery and despair. I'm afraid of what's to come, afraid of transferring schools, afraid of my major, afraid of my career. Will I even enjoy it? Will I make a difference? Will my life be worth all this inner pain? I find myself questioning my life every single day. It's my daily routine. I find myself wondering if all of this suffering is worth it anyway. Can I just look into my future? I wish I could find out my fate. Is it really fate? Is it in my control? The question is oh so very old, drifting. My mind keeps drifting on. I find myself correcting my thoughts constantly. Look at that, what the hell are they doing? Don't judge, I keep yelling to myself. You know nothing of them. Stop being an ignorant hypocrite. I find myself saying positive things to others, constantly cheering them up, while I think the worst of myself in all kinds of ways. But I correct it by replying, don't focus on the negative. Your future is bright. You'll be something someday. You'll do great. I'm gone from the world that we live in. My head's in its own universe. Positivity and negativity clash constantly, showing a smile to everyone I know, shredding every bit of myself that gives me hope, hoping to survive through it, hoping to end it now, hoping to enjoy every last ounce of time that I may have left. Nothing in this world is made to last in the cycle of self-struggles. Am I the only one who sees the world this way? I am worried about every little decision of my life. I do everything for my future. I'm not living in the present because it's not very pleasant. I restrict myself of anything that can harm my future. I want to do every single thing right, no matter how difficult it may be. Because my future will be exciting. Because my future will be fun. Because my future holds my successful dreams. Because the future is my only hope of being free. And this is the real me. Thank you.